Oh shit. All right, so last question and then we'll call it a day. What would be y'all's advice for, because we're, you guys are both coaches. You guys are in the scene of jiu-jitsu. So what would be your advice to someone who's, maybe they've been a student for a long time, they're, they're in jiu-jitsu, but they're looking to make that transition to being a coach or wow. maybe running running some classes. What would be y'all's advice to them to take that like leadership role and being that coach? Yeah. Uh, subscribe to Submeta and Gross. watch how Lachlan teaches stuff. And then... Uh, <laughs> understand the key details that he highlights when he teaches his moves. Uh, I don't know, from, a, from an instructor, I, I, I watch a lot of other people teach stuff and then I kind of combine the things that stick out. Yeah. So I watch a lot of, I do watch a lot of Lachlan. Lachlan's my favorite instructor the best, to watch. The best. I think Submeta is the greatest, I genuinely think Submeta is the greatest training resource in the world. Damn. Like and it's only thirty dollars a month. He's sponsored. And it, I'm not sponsored by them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've coach. never, <laughs> even, I've literally <laughs> never even met Lachlan. Use discount code Shop but Twister. I'm just saying. I think it's the if for thirty dollars a month. If I was like a broke white or blue belt, uh, or if I was just starting a coach and I wanted to see how a world class coach described his moves, kind of went through his set it, like the way that he teaches stuff, I would probably do that. And then I would just. Uh, record my classes and watch them back like you know that's what I'm saying. Big, I think yeah. that's really, really helpful. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I think the uh, my thing I see with a lot of people going into coaching is that you need to realize no one, most people don't give a shit how good you are. Um, it's really not so much about showing people how good you are. It's about caring about the people that you're teaching. Great advice. Yeah. And I think that's such a big deal because like I would, if I'm like, I'm not at a point here where I have to get instructors. But like, I'd rather have an instructor who really cares about my students and seeing them get better versus just showing them how good he is. So I think that's one part. It's like, make sure you're in it for the right reason. I think a big problem with coaches is they don't give a fuck about coach. They just wanna like show what they know yeah. versus like make people better, right? And that's, I think, a big deal. And then the second thing is don't think you know everything. Like that was my biggest like, uh, you know, hurdle. Because I used to, like, dude, I was studying, like, probably as much as Sean everything. Like, the, the day I heard DVDs, the lock. And so, like, someone would have an answer, and I'd be like, I have every response for that. And it's like, but can you do them? No. <laughs> like, but I know it works. Yeah. I know it works. So, like, now I use a lot less of uh, definitives when I teach. I'd be like, this might work. Try this. Like, it, it depends on your body type. If you have, you know, just don't think you know everything. So, the two things is, like, make sure you care. Like, make sure you care about the person you're teaching. Like, have a good heart there, and then also don't think you know everything. Like, always be studying, you know? And one more thing, if you're coaching and your your guys are competing, try to show up if you can. Yeah. I didn't have that until I was a brown belt. Yeah. No one showed up ever. I always competed with no one in my corner. Yeah, me too. And let me tell you how bad that sucks. Yeah, it's hard. And now, as I, I competed, and I text my instructor, I was like, hey, it's my first competition in like four years. He had something else going on and just canceled all his plans. Not that you have to do that, yeah. but having him in my corner was like, this is amazing. Like yeah. I felt, and then like, I ended up doing really well in that competition. It's the first time I ever got advice while I was in a match yeah. from somebody that wasn't like my girlfriend at the time. Or like, yeah. you know, it was like, they just feel like I'm not in this alone. And I think that makes a, I'm at every competition that I can be at for my students. If yeah. I can be there, I'm there. To, to uh, add to that too, just I think also uh, you have to be really careful with deterring people. Like if a kid is really passionate about something, sometimes they can be annoying as an instructor. Like you'd be like, that kid's fucking annoying. Like he, he's a white belt. And I, like you really have to like hone in their energy and like keep their passion going, you know, like direct them in the right way instead of deterring it. Like, dude, stop doing that. Stop doing this. Like, you know, I, I've found that. I have a lot of young kids who come through that are like, we're in a pretty posh neighborhood. Like pretty granola and so like these kids like, didn't have too many struggles and so it's been hard but I've learned to like encourage instead of discourage that's a big yeah. deal yeah.